Thanksgiving week and long week. So we do have a few announcements. We will be having a special council meeting this Thursday at 6 o'clock to discuss our 2024 budget. I know that if you don't aren't on council, I'm sure you would love to come and be part of that discussion. It'll be a lot of fun, but everyone is welcome. Uh, we do need some donations for our blessing box. Uh, right now, because it's now cold, it's a little bit of a tricky time. So we can't have anything in liquid, in glass, or in cans. So you have to use your uh, critical thinking skills when you go to the grocery store and figure out if this is something appropriate. But uh, we could use some donations. And a lot going on next Sunday. We, uh, our poinsettia orders are due so that we can beautify the sanctuary for Christmas Eve. We have our special uh, music, Nick Jen Jenitsky from the Lyric Chicago Lyric Opera will be here to share his talents with us. It's also communion, and after worship, there will be Christmas carol. So does anybody else have any announcements? If you've not purchased your tickets to Jean's Concert, she will have some next week as well. I don't have that on the slide. Okay. Well, let us join together in our response of welcome statement. At St. John's United Church of Christ, we are living outwardly and valuing everyone. We live in work and make God's love. In that spirit, we extend love to all who come into our midst regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, race, nationality, skin color, culture, differing abilities, age, or political affiliations to participate fully in all aspects of church. Our ministry is to bring the good news of Christ's love to all. We work in God's name to tear down walls and build community. To talk with each other through all the life circumstances. To provide for those in need. To offer comfort to the hurting and the sick. And to uplift the broken heart. Where we fail, we ask for God's forgiveness. May the Holy Spirit and our siblings continue to challenge us to do better. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome. Let us stand and join together as we sing our choral intro. Be present among us as we praise your name. Bring 
offering our burdens and give thanks for all that you are and in all that you do. Amen. Our first hymn is Come Christians Join to Sing. <laughs> You can sit beside me. Uh -huh. You remember Cookie? Hi, how are you? Um, no, he started falling apart. He couldn't see. He came out today because today is a special day. Did you know that? The day that we celebrate that Christ is King. Do you know what a King is? You ever played checkers before? What happens in checkers when you somebody moves all the way across the board? They say king me. King me, yeah. You think that's the kind of king that Jesus is? No. No. What about in chess? There's one piece that is a king, and when they uh, uh, when you're playing, you try to capture the other guy's king, get him so he's cornered and can't move. You think that's the kind of king that Jesus is? No. What kind of king do you think Jesus is? He's a nice king, huh? So that's one of the things that we learn about in history when you start talking about history, uh, excluding checkers and chess and stuff like that, and even excluding uh, Elvis Presley. They said he was a king of rock and roll. And I don't know some of these people here that are at that age where I said, the king's here. They just jump up and say, Elvis! <laughs> But then they'd be surprised, wouldn't they? Because it'd probably be Jesus coming in to be with us uh, in the service today. Uh, you know what a crown is? Yes. What's a crown? A crown is a, like a headband, but, it's, but it doesn't go like this. It goes like this. I don't want a crown. I want to be king today. And you want? You think you should be king? No. You want him to be king today? No. no. Okay. Uh, one of the things we learned about in history, the king usually are pretty uh, ruthless. And uh, they don't really care about the people that they rule over. They like power. 
and they like to, to have everything about themselves and and things like that. Uh, but we have a, a king that uh, uh, is nice. He would rather be here today with us, uh, and he's here today with us in spirit. And he lives in each one of us, in our hearts, and he just uh, uh, loves to be with us when we're hurting. When we have any kind of need, we can talk to Jesus, because of being that, that type of a king. And if you had one of those mean kings, they would want to listen to you. They care about themselves. They care about wanting all the money. We have a Jesus that would rather be with the, the poor people, uh, people that suffering, and that's what he does with us. So as you go through life, you'll find out that King Jesus wants to be in your suffering and uh, in your in your life completely. When you're happy, he wants to celebrate with you. Uh, when you're hurt, he wants to uh, uh, minister to you, uh, help you to, to uh, feel better. And uh, what, a, what a special king he is, uh, King Jesus. And there's another thing about the kings that we've had down through history. They die. They get, or they get overthrown. Sometimes they got killed. And they die, and they're just gone. Guess what? King Jesus lives forever and ever and ever. He will always be around. And he's the one that has uh, overcome death by giving each one of us life through him. And so we, we come to worship uh, King Jesus today as we, as we come together. And so what I want to do is, is pray and let's give uh, King Jesus a, a, a thanks, okay? We bow to him. Uh, King Jesus, we come to, to celebrate this day. This is a special day uh, for you. And, and, uh, but we really know down deep in our hearts that you're always our king. And they get, uh, can you, uh, Jesus, to be with us no matter what's going on in our life? And that we can call upon you, whether we're, we're uh, small kids or whether we're old people. Uh, you're right beside, our, beside us all, uh, every day in every way. And uh, you're as close as a prayer, as close as a whisper. And you'll come and, and, and help us. Uh, King Jesus, we love you and we want to give you all the praise in your name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Where's my cookies? You told me you're going to. Uh, nom, 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 Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us rise and join in our next hymn, number 252. The Lord gives us grace. All we must do is ask. Go, your sins are forgiven.
Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be here today and to be able to share uh, some of the gospel uh, with you this morning. And, and uh, uh, I have such a love for Christ that I love talking about uh, my Lord Jesus and always have. And uh, uh, one of the things is, is uh, I've been retired two years and uh, used to do this every Sunday, but uh, this kind of seems weird. And I think I'm more nervous than I. You know, I have been in a long time. But anyway, I, I do want to share it with you. And uh, a message, but first of all, we have a couple of scriptures uh, that are the lectionary scriptures for this week. And the first scripture is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 to 26. And then it drops down to verse 28. <clears throat> But in fact, Christ had been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have died. For since death came to a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come to a human being. For all has died in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruit, and then as his coming, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he had destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Verse 28, and when all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who put all things in subjection under him, so that God may be all in all. Then we're going to drop back to the Gospel reading in Matthew. It's in the 25th chapter, verses 31 through 46. And this is what it says, Church. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will gather before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. Lord, when, it, when was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we, we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those on the left hand, You that are cursed, depart from the me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you, hungry or thirsty or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, it did not take care of you. And then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. This is a kind of an interesting Sunday. Um, that we were visiting today. And of course, the Sunday shows that uh, um, 
Jesus shows that it himself is a humble king, and he invites us to accept his rule in every aspect of our life. And uh, I like this to begin with kind of a humorous story, and, and uh, pastors that kind of have had this happen to before. And one pastor was giving a message, and as he went on, he became more animated in what he was talking about, and, and he made a sweeping gesture and knocked his papers from the pulpit. And of course, he scrambled down to get them all picked up and and, uh, and then walked back up there and he said, now where was I? And a voice from the back of the congregation says, right near the end. <laughs> and well, we are at the end, uh, honestly, today. And not the end of this message, though, because it's going to take a little while here. But a liturgical year, which is uh, year A. And on this final Sunday, we celebrate the Feast of Christ. And we acknowledge that Jesus as king of the universe, not just of our lives, but the whole universe, part of creation, and of earth, and, and, and of all of our lives, not just my life, but everybody's life. Next Sunday is an interesting Sunday because we start a new year uh, in the liturgical uh, calendar, year B, and of course it's Advent 1. And Christ the King Sunday is a day for us to celebrate, to come together and celebrate uh, Jesus. Christ as a king who will draw, us, uh, draw all of us into his eternal kingdom. And of course, it's a day to reflect on love's victory over death. Christ is a son of man who knows what it is to be human. He is a king who is not interested in power, but in weakness. Who lives and works among all of his people, enduring every pain and hardship that they endure. Christ, the King Sunday, is, was set aside in ancient times. It was a day on which Christ should reflect on the fact that Jesus Christ is the King and our King. And not only that, but the, is the birth of the, the eternal King. Christ never died. He will come again. We say that all the time, don't we, as we worship together. And, uh, uh, Honestly, I must confess that I have sympathy for some uh, denomination, denominations in some churches because they don't celebrate this day. They choose not to, uh, and, you know, I don't like it, but I understand why. Because as all of us here today, we do not know what living under a king is like at all, do we? Uh, we don't know what the, uh, you know, living in a kingdom in that way, where you have a harsh ruler, uh, what that would be like. And uh, today I think we could uh, call a lot of the, the, the people that uh, we think of as kings or like kings, probably the dictators of the world. The blessing here is the question that is asked for the Lord of glory. Did you notice the question as I read it this morning? You probably noticed it right away from the goats. I mean, you know, they're going to eternal damnation. And so we kind of, I grabbed it. We would expect every goat to ask such a question. And they are the goat, after all. And Jesus tells them what they did not do, how they neglected him in this time of great need. And when he was hungry, when he was thirsty, they didn't help. And they didn't offer anything. They didn't pitch in or show up, but they asked, when was it that we saw them and didn't help? And the implication being that they know, if they had known it was going to be on the test, they would, would have studied a little harder and made sure that they would help. Uh, they would help those needy people that they rely on now as being not worthy. I was uh, uh, on several committees in my, my pastoral career and a couple of my designs come for that reason. Uh, one of them was a food bank and I had a key to the food bank. And in a way, if somebody called me and they said they were out of food, uh, I had had keys, so I'd just go in and get food and go down to the grocery store and normally bought milk and bread and, and took to them. If the, the household had kids in it, there was no way to stop me. I was going to get groceries for the kids. 
kids uh, of the house and make sure that they had groceries. I had a call one time from a guy and uh, uh, they, uh, he said that they didn't have any food in the refrigerator or cupboard. So I went to the food bank and got the food and then he always signed it out to who he gave it to and stuff. And I got back uh, uh, on Monday, it was on a weekend, I got back on Monday and uh, I heard about that. That father was a drug addict, ex drug addict, and he wasn't worthy of getting food. And he probably, you know, uh, 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 probably hurt the kid all the time and, and stuff like that. And so I purposely, a couple of days, I went back to the guy's house. I went into the house and I saw the kid, and everything in the house looked great. And he had some little trucks. I got down the floor and played trucks for a little while. And I didn't see bruises on the kids or anything like that. So I went back again and I said, well, I went over to the house. You know, I took a note again and, and went over to that house. And I said, I don't see a you know, problem. It looks like it's all taken care of. Well, but, he, but, but his family, the whole family is drug addict. You know, and I said, well, I'll tell you something right now. If I have a kid in food bank and there's kids hungry, you know, I'm going to feed them. And again, they said, well, you got to understand, he gets food. You know, he, he was in at the beginning of the month. And I said, I'll just take my key. I said, you know, I, you know, I said, I'm not gonna, you know, go in and try to check the cupboard in the refrigerator. And again, uh, another committee was the same way. You know, they always they had to know the person. They had to be somebody in the, in the, in the town that we lived in. Or if they had a bad reputation, there was no help there for them. And uh, of course, I think that's what you know we're learning today. Uh, we don't make that decision if the person's hungry. What do we do? We feed them. Uh, if the person's thirsty, we we give them uh, 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 what they need to not be thirsty anymore. And then uh, we look at the uh, the sheep now. And of course, we can imagine the sheep, you know, very bad by the sheep even before the goats were con uh, confronted. It's kind of interesting. The sheep didn't know either. When was it that we saw you? And the sheep said, What was it? Tell us. We must have missed it. We must have missed it in our busyness to help and our attention uh, to the job at hand. We didn't realize that it's important to that moment. We thought we were just, just helping. We thought we were just serving. We didn't realize that we were worshiping at the same time. When you're out in your community and you're helping, that's part of the, the, the worship that we do as a Christian. We, we, we dedicate our lives to, to helping the people out around us that we see that have that need. And listen, when you're living a life filled with God's grace and love, uh, service to others is automatic. And so often you don't know that you are in serving Christ. Do you hear me? You're out there doing something and you don't, you know, think about, well, I'm going to get some points now, you know, on my scorecard. Uh, it's going to get me to heaven. Uh, Matthew 6, verses 2 to, uh, 2 to 4 says, So when you give to the needy, do announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the street. To be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they receive their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be done in secret. So your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Matthew 23, 11 through 12 says, uh, The greatest among you will be servant. If anyone wants to be first, he must be last of all, and a servant of all. Uh, the greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. And the greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one with the heart of a servant. You have a pastor here that's got that heart, uh, that she looks out in, into the uh, community and, and places uh, looking for those that have a need and try to take uh, uh, take care of that need. Uh, you know, there are those that read this, this this parable that we read today and they don't like it. They're afraid that it might lead to, to work righteousness. Work righteousness means 
It gives us the idea that, that we have our, our place in the kingdom as long as we do good works. We don't do good works, good works to get to the get into heaven or to get started by our name or, or, or whatever. We do the good works because Christ heart. We see the world through through the heart of God, through the eyes of God, and we feel through the, the our hearts the, that God has given me. I told you when I was on the uh, kitchen floor as an alcoholic and, and I was selfish. Alcoholism or drug addict, uh, um, you know, drug addict is, is uh, very selfish. And there's a lot of people along the way that get hurt. And I was on the floor and, and when I got up and I knew that God loved me and God had forgiven me, you know, I've told everybody many, many times, I had a heart transplant on that kitchen floor uh, that time. I look a little different. I look at people different. And we all can do that if we ask for that heart. Um, there's many people out there going to uh, uh, great lengths to, to tell us that we cannot earn our, our salvation. And we got to remember, it's a gift from God by grace through the faith that we have in our Christ, our King. Uh, that we're talking about today. And I was uh, uh, thinking about the parable today. It teaches us uh, several things that's so important, I think, as, as we uh, go through this. And the things that Jesus talked about is simple things. He says, you know, uh, giving a hungry person a meal or a thirsty person a drink, welcoming strangers, cheering up the sick, visiting the prisoners, are things that which anybody can do. You don't have to have a degree of any kind, or you don't even have to have a lot of money to in order to do those things. Each person here can do that. Any person can help their neighbor out uh, by giving to them. And uh, those who helped did not think they were helping, and, and that the sheep had no idea they were, were helping. It was something that was automatic to them. Why? Because they had Christ the King as their leader. They had that, that spirit of, of, of love, the spirit of grace, shown mercy uh, as they've been shown mercy. And uh, one of the things is, uh, and, 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 and uh, I can say it in a little different way, is his judgment that would depend on degrees he might have received, fame, whether you're, you're famous or not famous. Uh, that's not going to tip the scale in your favor or the fortune that you get in life that you build up in life. It has nothing to do, do with any of that. It has to do with love. Going out there and, and, and loving your neighbor as Christ loves you. And, uh, and as we look at that scripture, I want you to notice something. Right in the beginning, as, as Christ is talking about judgment, uh, Judgment does not fall on the nations. So if things happen in a nation, it don't fall on nations. Christ don't condemn a whole nation individually. Each one of us is, is responsible for, for going out and, and serving Christ in the world. And uh, again, uh, what a wonderful scripture that truly, truly is. And especially for a church like this that has an open heart uh, to serve. And uh, of course, I say Muriel, uh, Pastor Muriel, always asking us to sign up for this, to sign up for that, uh, and that's part of being disciples for Christ. We pray for King. Uh, Father, we are so thankful that we have a King, uh, a King that uh, 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 is has uh, been human and, and uh, can uh, feel the, our 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 feelings and, and know our our sufferings and and. Uh, know our desires and, and uh, um, our, it's always with us and, and that's what's so great about Jesus he never leaves us or forsakes us but he's always there and I just pray uh, today Lord that each person here will uh, not just leave this sermon here this morning but will go home and read the scriptures again and, and uh, I'll think about it and uh, ask uh, the Lord uh, to, to uh, <coughs> transfer transform their hearts, uh, their minds, uh, and their spirit and their body uh, so that uh, uh, 
God that we can serve those that uh, need to be identified and, and taken care of. Uh, we love you, Jesus, and we just give all the praise in your name. Amen. <coughs> Now I'm going to sing this solo. Um, <laughs> key of uh, H. No? No key of H? Yeah. <laughs> See, you do it. Thank you. <clears throat> so there is one small correction in the bulletin. Um, the choir is a little lean today, so they're not going to be doing Amazing Grace. My chains are gone. They will be singing something else, but we don't need to join in. You can if you want, if you want to work. So this is our last Sunday of the month for our second mile offering going to Remedies, which helps not only for domestic abuse survivors, but also substance abuse in Rockford and Boone County. It's just a little synopsis of, uh, from their annual report from last year, which I think just gives some astounding and very sad numbers about the services that they have been called to provide. So we just ask that you give as generously as you are able. Remember, the wooden plate goes to remedies. The bronze plate goes to pay our daily expenses such as our electric bill and our salaries and our water bill and all of, all of those sorts of things that we all experience in our lives as well. If you cannot put anything in the offering plate, if you just hold it and offer a prayer up, that is also very much appreciated.
God, we thank you for the gifts that you give to us, and we just ask you to accept these gifts of time, talent, and treasure for your world and for the world that needs so much help at this time. May our offerings make a small dent in the work that is to be done. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 506. What a friend we have in Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you.